Happy Wednesday, everyone. Today, I am going to continue my series on what you will need to take an AMP test. On this episode, we're going to talk about everything you'll need to actually schedule the test and take the test. So stick around. Okay, so the first thing, if you have not watched my other videos on qualifications for getting an AMP, how to get an AMP, what to study for the test, go and watch those videos. But in this video, I'm going to assume that you have already graduated or are very close to graduating from a FAR Part 147 school and or have been signed off by the FAA at your local FISDO with an 8610-2 and authorized to take the test on a self-study basis. So you've got your classes done, you're ready to take the test. What tests are there? If you're getting an airframe certificate, you're going to have a general written test, an airframe written test, a general oral and practical, and a power plant oral and practical. If you're just getting a power plant certificate, you're going to have a general written test, a power plant written test, a oral and practical for general, and an oral and practical for power plant. But before you can take any of those, you're going to have to generate some information with the FAA so that they can track you. That is where our first website comes in. I will link this down below in the description, but you are going to go to iacra.faa.gov. That is the internal airman certification record something, FAA.gov, okay? What you're gonna wanna do when you go to IACRA is generate a profile. All you're going to do is generate a user profile and it will ask you for your typical information, right? It's gonna ask you for your name, your height, your weight, male, female, all that good stuff, right? Once you create that profile, you're gonna create a login, right? So you'll have a login username and you'll have a password. Write those down, do not forget them. You will need them over and over again. You will create your profile. It will take you to your profile page. Now here's where a lot of my students and people get confused. Do not click start an application. You don't need to start an application. What you will click, or you won't actually click anything. If you look up at the top, for you it would be the top left hand corner, there is a little block that says FTN. That is your federal tracking number. And that number is what the FAA uses to track your progress in the testing process. So you will get an FA or sorry, you will get an FTN number. We'll call it 1111. Okay? That's your FTN number. There's usually letters involved. Okay? You've gone to IACRA, you've generated your profile, you have an FTN number. You should also have your 8610-2 signed off by the FAA and or a certificate of completion from the 147 program that you graduated. That will also have a number on it. That's coming up very soon. You will then go to psiexams.com. psiexams.com is how you pay for and schedule your general written test, your airframe written test, and your power plant written test. The FAA let PSI exams take over the testing process as a third party. So you will actually go in there to schedule the test and pay for the test. Again, you will have to create a profile. Once you get in there, they will ask, what are you applying for? And you should put airman or repairman, airframe, power plant, right? And it will ask, what is your FTN number? When it asks for your FTN number, draw one of these, you will put that number in that you generated on the IACRA website. It will then ask, what is your approval for testing? If it was being signed off by the FAA with an 8610-2, it will have you fill out that block. If it is completion from a 147 school, it will ask for the school information. So you'll put in your school's name and their approved program number. We'll give a fake number, we'll call it 717-8883, right? That's the number for the school. You'll put that number in and click next. It will now allow you to select which test you wanna schedule. You need to take your general test first. You can actually take your airframe test or your power plant test first. You can take them in any order, so long as when you go and take your O and P's or your oral and practical, you've got them all done, okay? So you'll take your general written, you'll schedule it through PSI exams. It will give you a list of all the testing for centers, their address, and how much the test cost. So you will schedule it through PSI exams. 
your general written, your airframe written, and your power plant written. Now remember, you can take just an A or just a P. You don't have to get both, okay? So you've gone to PSI exams, you've scheduled your writtens. Now I'm gonna move over here and I'm gonna talk about the actual tests. First, let me just uh, erase this little arrow right here. So for general, I'm gonna put G to represent general. And then I'm gonna separate airframe and power plant. The commonality is you have to have general for both. You will have a written. For power plant, you will have a written. For airframe, you will have a written. Okay, now I'm gonna break this into a little bit different way of looking at it. The test is actually kept in sections. So general is section one. General is section one. Okay, let me erase this over here. There are two sections in airframe. So if you came down with airframe, you will have sections two and three. And then there are two sections in power plants. So that is sections four and five. Okay, now there's only one written test for general, there's only one written test for airframe, there's only one written test for power plant. But you've got your written test done, you've passed. Now you need to call a designated mechanic examiner. And you can go to the FAA website and look for a list of DMEs, designated mechanic examiner, in your area, call them up, how much is your test, how much are your fees, and get scheduled to take your test. When you go to the DME, most likely he will have already had you fill out an FAA form 8610-2. That can be found on the FAA website if you put in the search bar, 8610-2, hit search. It should take you to forms and publications and take you to that form so you can download it, okay? And that's gonna ask you a lot of your information, um, your name, height, weight, all that. What basis is the approval for your test, which is the FAA approved? You should already have an 8610-2 or a 147 school, and that's where you fill out the 147 school block, okay? The DME is going to give you an oral and a practical for each section. For, so for section one, there is an oral. For section two, there is an oral. For section three, for section four, and for section five. And he's also gonna give you a practical, 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 okay? Now, you can fail any oral section and that section stops and he will move to the next section, okay? So if I give you an example, I go in, I start my general oral, I pass all my oral questions, I don't get anything wrong. I move on to airframe section two. I get everything right. We move on to airframe section three. I fail the section three for whatever reason. He asked me four questions in a row, I got them all wrong, okay? He's gonna say, okay, we're gonna move on and do section four and section five, but section three stops. So let's say in section three there are four subsections that he can ask you questions from. There's not. I don't know the exact number off the top of my head right now. But if you fail the first section, you stop. So when you come back and retest section three, you have to either wait 30 days or get retrained by an airframe or power plant technician and get signed off that you've been retrained to come back and test sooner than that. You can actually test the same day, which I've had students do that. He will continue where you left off in that section with your test, and it's the same for power plant. If you fail your general oral, he'll pause section one and test you on section two, three, four, and five. You can, again, you can take just an airframe, you can take just a power plant. So if you get all of that right and section one oral is all you failed, he'll go ahead and do all of your practical projects. This is your actually doing safety wire. You're actually servicing a brake reservoir with hydraulic fluid, troubleshooting a circuit um, and whatnot. He will have you do that on your practical projects. Little piece of advice from me here. Do not overthink the, pack, the practical projects. When I was doing airframe for electricity, no, sorry, when I was doing basic electricity, he told me to identify the position of a switch. And I had a switch like this and it said on, off. And the switch was sitting up in the on position. And he goes, what's the position of that switch? <clears throat> and I was like, um, do you, have a, do you have a multimeter? And he said, what do you need a multimeter for? And I said, well, to see if there's continuity. And he goes, what do you need to know continuity for? I asked you if the switch was on or off. And I go, well, it's on. And he goes, there you go. That's all I'm asking. So my advice there, 
Don't overthink the practical projects. I, I got guilty of that a couple of times, okay? So, if you pass everything, excellent, congratulations, good for you. If not, like I said, if you fail one of these, you will get a discontinued on that section, but you'll continue with the other sections and you'll have to come back and retest either after 30 days or you've been retrained. Congratulations, you've passed your test, right? You've passed all of your written tests, you passed all of your oral and practical tests. The DME fills out your 8610-2 and he is going to submit to the FAA your paperwork that says you have passed the test. After a period of, of four to six weeks, they should send you a card in the mail. I get asked this a lot by my students. Well, okay, I passed the test, am I an AMP? Yes, you are an AMP, but you will not have a number yet. You'll get a temporary paper certificate that is good for 90 days with a pending number. Once you get that, you can begin to exercise the privileges of that certificate. So maintenance, preventative maintenance, rebuilding and alteration. But when you sign off your logbooks and whatnot, where it comes to number, you will have to write in there number pending. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful. I know I talked kind of fast. I was trying to get through it pretty quickly. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to email me. Feel free to leave a comment, whatever you got to do. If you liked the video, you thought it was helpful, leave me a like, leave us a comment, subscribe, go watch some more of my other videos. And as always, be easy.